Military finds don't always turn up in places you'd expect them to be. An old battlefield might be a good place to go looking for them, as would the coastlines close to Second World War or First World War battles. Unexpected finds, on the other hand, could turn up almost anywhere. We've got some surprising and incredible examples of unexpected military finds for you in this video, along with some spectacular tales about better-known discoveries. Japan didn't manage to successfully occupy much American territory during the Second World War, but its forces did manage to get their hands on Kiska Island in the western Aleutians. The island is barren and abandoned today, but it still bears the scars of what history sees as a fairly disastrous military campaign. The Japanese only held the island for a year and fled before it was retaken, leaving all of their equipment behind when they retreated. Tragically, the American and Canadian forces approaching the island in August 1943 didn't know the Japanese had already left, so they briefly opened fire on each other in the mistaken belief they'd encountered enemy forces. As if that wasn't bad enough, there were also booby traps scattered all over the island for the Allies to stumble across when they landed. Today, the island is littered with shipwrecks, broken piers, rusty artillery guns, and bullet casings. It's a haunting and lonely place with a strange atmosphere, which is probably why even military enthusiasts tend to give it a miss as a tourism destination. Of all the military vehicles left behind on Kiska, it's perhaps this tiny Japanese submarine that's the strangest. It's an A-type midget submarine, possibly the very same one that sank the USS Abner Reed in August 1943. It's known that six of these tiny submarines were brought to Kiska by the occupying Japanese forces, but this is the only one that's ever been found. It's entirely possible that the other five are under the sea. The submarine is tiny, measuring only 78 feet from one end to the other. It wouldn't be especially comfortable for just one person to sit inside it and operate it, but Japanese soldiers were expected to get in two at a time. Because of their design and their shape, said to have been inspired by killer whales, they were sometimes described by the US Navy as manned torpedoes rather than submarines. Their size made them extremely difficult to identify and target when they approached American ships, and so they would have proven to be valuable assets during battles at sea. That makes it a little odd that the Japanese didn't build more of them. On October 6, 1941, the British munitions ship SS Thistlegorm was attacked by German bombers and sank in the Red Sea. The badly damaged vessel was set on fire by the attack and went down when the fire spread to the ammunition store and caused an explosion. Torn in two, it took the Thistlegorm less than a minute to sink, taking all of its cargo down with it. In 2018, German photographer Tobias Friedrich dived down to the wreck and took this picture, which won him the Underwater Photographer of the Year Award for 2018. The photo was taken from inside the ship's cargo hold, where we can see a stockpile of Norton 16H motorbikes. Despite the violence of the explosion that sank the vessel, the dozens of motorcycles in the hold are still lined up in perfect formation next to the cars that went down to the bottom of the ocean with them. All of these vehicles, along with uniforms, rifles, steam locomotives, and aircraft parts, were on their way to Alexandria in Egypt when the Thistlegorm sank. It was a hugely expensive loss for the Allies. Of all the places you might expect a military submarine to surface, the middle of a busy road is among the least likely. Nevertheless, that was the scene that awaited the residents of Milan, Italy, when they woke up on the morning of October 1st, 2013. It appeared that the vessel had literally burst through the road, showering debris everywhere and damaging a parked car in the process. In this instance, though, all was not as it seemed. The incident was carefully staged by an Italian insurance company called Europe Assistance IT, 
which even went as far as hiring actors to play lost submariners and give interviews to the press. Apparently, this was part of a marketing campaign under the heading Protect Your Life, with the idea that you should buy life insurance, because you never know what might happen. It's one of the weirdest insurance advertising campaigns we've ever seen, but we suppose we should at least give them some credit for being original. Military enthusiasts should rest assured that no Second World War subs were damaged in this stunt, despite the convincing appearance of the vessel it's just a prop built for the campaign. There are many mysteries about the Second World War that will never be solved. For a long time, one of them was the question of why the German submarine U-534 ignored orders to surrender after being sent away from Germany on May 2, 1945, shortly before the country itself surrendered. Admiral Karl Dönitz ordered the surrender of all submarines as part of the wider surrender, but U-534 continued on course towards Christiansand in Norway. The submarine ignored all German and Allied radio transmissions, and so it was reluctantly attacked and sunk by a British Royal Air Force Liberator bomber on May 4th. The strange behavior of Captain Herbert Nolau and his crew led to speculation that the U-534 was carrying either high-ranking Nazi officers or Nazi treasure. When the wreck was identified and raised in 1993, we finally got some answers, and they had nothing to do with stolen treasure. In the aft section of the submarine, marine archaeologists found three experimental T-11 torpedoes with acoustic homing systems designed to counteract the Foxer decoy system used by the British. It seems that even in defeat, the Germans didn't want the Allies to get their hands on their military secrets and they were prepared to sacrifice the U-534 and her crew to protect them. Like any country or territory that's seen extended battles fought on its land, Vietnam still bears the scars of the war that raged within its borders during the 1960s and 1970s. Some of those scars come in the shape of bombs that didn't explode when they landed, and more than a few of those bombs are still dangerous. That means they have to be disposed of very carefully. One of the largest unexploded bombs discovered there in recent times was found in October 2019. This Mark 82 bomb, weighing 500 pounds, turned up in the northern Quang Nin province, not far from another 250-pound bomb that turned up in Quant Bin province two days earlier. In both instances, the bombs were discovered because of construction work. Both were attended by specialist crews and made safe within 24 hours of their discovery. It's thought that over a fifth of Vietnam's landmass still contained unexploded ordnance, and it's becoming more dangerous and unstable as it gets older. The war ended in 1975, but as many as 100,000 people have been killed or injured since then by the landmines, bombs, and artillery shells that it left behind. As a further illustration of the point we just made, here are another 352 mortar shells and grenades that were found in Vietnam's Ba Ria Vung province in November 2019. They're covered in so much orange rust that the pictures look a little bit like rows of fried chicken. If only they were anything so benign. The huge pile of ordnance was found during excavation work ahead of the construction of a new market in the area. This must once have been a heavily fortified area. Rather than being strewn across the ground, the munitions were inside a pair of previously undiscovered tunnels dug deep below the surface. That raises the worrying prospect of the existence of more tunnels in the area, perhaps even running below the houses that have been built since the war ended. It's always been known that the South Vietnamese side had a garrison in the area, but the existence of underground tunnels was never disclosed. Work on the new market has since resumed, but for understandable reasons, they're progressing slowly and cautiously. 
As a rule of thumb, the bigger the bomb you find is, the bigger the problem you face in trying to make it safe. That's why the enormous 550-pound bomb that was found in Bangladesh in December 2020 was treated with so much caution. There was another very good reason for the authorities to be worried about it, though. The bomb turned up beneath the ground at Shah Jalal International Airport in Dhaka. Construction workers at the airport were in the process of building a third terminal for the airport at the time of the discovery, but the entire airport had to be evacuated after the find, subsequently playing havoc with air travel in the region. The bomb experts who were summoned to the scene believe the explosive to be a relic of the Bangladeshi Liberation War of 1971. It was the second such bomb to be found since the work started, although the first was far smaller and nowhere near as frightening. It's inevitable that more bombs will be found in the area before the construction work is finished, which makes the job a very difficult one. If construction work doesn't unearth or disturb long-forgotten bombs, Sometimes, Mother Nature steps in and does the job herself. In late October 2020, a huge storm swept through Vietnam's Loc Ha district, bringing floods in its wake. When the floodwaters receded, local residents found that the storm had left a gift behind, a six-foot-long MK-83 bomb with a weight of almost 1,000 pounds, sitting in the middle of a farmer's field. It was quite a shock for farmer Nguyen Khak Dung to find as he went to inspect his field in the aftermath of the storm. This is yet another relic of the Vietnam War. As you've already seen in this video, there are still plenty of them to be found. In fact, some estimates say that there might be as much as 800,000 tons of unexploded ordnance scattered all over the country, all of which may eventually become a threat. In this instance, the bomb disposal squad was able to defuse the giant explosive at the scene and then take it away safely. But they won't always be so lucky. Nick Mead of Brackley, England collects and restores tanks. It's an unusual job, but it can be a very rewarding one. Never has it been more rewarding, though, than in 2016 when he bought an old Russian T-54-69 tank off eBay and arranged to have it delivered. Everything appeared to be normal when Nick collected the tank, but as he started stripping it down and preparing it for restoration, something in the fuel tank stopped him dead in his tracks. There, hiding in the dark, was bar after bar of solid gold. There's no way the eBay seller could have known about this. The tank was bought for $50,000, and the combined value of all these gold bars exceeds two million. Nick's first thought was that the gold might have been stolen by Iraqi soldiers during the Gulf War, so he phoned the police. They weren't immediately sure what to do with all the gold, but they eventually took it away for an investigation and left Nick with a receipt, guaranteeing him ownership if the inquiry didn't turn up any criminal connections. What happened after that is sadly unknown. When attending the scene of an unexploded bomb, the first thing that experts will attempt to do is defuse it. If it can be defused at the site, it can then be safely taken away for further investigation elsewhere. Defusing an old device isn't always possible, though, and so sometimes they have to blow them up in controlled explosions instead. The British Royal Navy had to carry out the controlled explosion of an old wartime mine close to the coast of Weymouth Bay in Scotland in December 2020. And it made quite a splash. The World War II relic, believed to have been in the water for more than 80 years, was accidentally trawled by fishermen. They had to be evacuated from their own vessel as the experts moved in. Bomb disposal specialists quickly determined that the mine still contained 700 pounds of explosive material and was still viable. It didn't take them much longer to work out that there was no way of making it safe at the scene. They would have to blow it up, and they chose to do so underwater. By the time they carried out the detonation, the local press had been alerted, which made it possible for us to obtain some pretty spectacular shots of the bang. During 1942, battles between Allied and German forces raged in the skies above the Sahara Desert. It was into that storm 
that Royal Air Force Officer Flight Sergeant Dennis Copping flew on June 28th of this year, strapping into the cockpit of his Kitty Hawk P-40. He never came home again. Almost exactly 70 years later, in 2012, a Polish oil company conducting survey work in the Sahara came across the wreckage of the long-lost plane. Amazingly, the arid conditions of the desert have preserved the crashed aircraft almost perfectly. The fuselage, wings, cockpit, instruments, and tail were all intact, as were the guns and ammunition, although they were immediately removed by the Egyptian authorities. The reasons for the crash aren't immediately obvious, because there's no sign of bullet damage. But it's possible that Copping simply ran out of fuel because of poor planning. It's also likely he survived the crash. A parachute found nearby appears to have been rigged as a shelter from the desert sun, but he was never seen again. Sadly, it's probable that without water or any supplies, he succumbed to the elements. The British Museum wanted the aircraft back, but the Egyptians claimed it as their own and mounted it as an exhibit at the El Alamein Military Museum, complete with a historically inaccurate paint scheme. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!